Nick Hayson again, and uh, yeah, walking the dogs. They're a bit, uh, yeah, a bit slow this morning. They're both 14, which in human years is pushing 100, isn't it? So uh, I'm not surprised. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a gloomy old day. There's actually a few sailing boats out, actually. Um, visibility is probably only about two, 300 metres, or maybe 500 metres. Anyway, look, we were... We were talking on the last uh, on the last thing about um, AI, medical, synthetic biology, uh, wellness, longevity, which is which is I have a great deal of interest, and I would argue most people do because we want to know how long we've got, don't we? And we want to know: Are we going to die tomorrow? Are we going to die next year? Are we going to catch a disease? And and inevitably that leads us towards you know deep analysis of how we're made up, genes. You know, genetics, um, our DNA. You know, are there any mutations? Are there any any things going on? Are there any hereditary signals? And you know, what we're looking for is is early warning, aren't we, of of what we might get or what we already have? And you know, are we a ticking time bomb? And I I don't mean to be doom and gloom here, but uh, the reality of humanity and the reality of life is we. You know, we're we're a billions to billions to one shot of actually existing, which is interesting, and we can talk about that uh, the mathematics of that another time. But suffice to say, you know, the 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 sheer processing magnitude and the processing opportunity for understanding what's really going on is limited by modern computing, which is not so modern. It's still von von Neumann based, so it's instruction one at a time. And although we've got vast supercomputers and although we we can process vast amounts of information, as I said last time in the last conversation, things like the caffeine molecule is 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 significant and we don't have sufficient computation to really do it justice to find out what's really going on. And but when you when you upscale that to, to proteins, the building blocks of life, you know, amino acids, proteins, and you have ribosomes that you know, take take the chemistry, if, if you like, of these this um, fabrication opportunity. They they connect all the different amino acids and all the different options, and they build cells, and they build cells for different purposes: bone, tissue, eyes, what have you. And it's fascinating, and it's almost like a Meccano kit for life. And when you when you dig a little bit deeper, of course. You know, you, you, you often hear about protein folding and, you know, what does that really mean? What does that involve? Well, if we think about the caffeine molecule, the size of a protein is, again, a, a significant upgrade in complexity and, and computational overhead. And thereby, you know, we are, you know, we are, we're hoping that AI can give you this, this deep insight into this data set. But unfortunately, the data sets um, contain, you know, computational overhead, and you know, classical computing is is technically not up to the job, not yet, anyway. So, but then we, we, you know, I'm a fan of quantum and quantum computing, and you know, there, there's some big advancements that we can talk about in another conversation. But there are some some technically some big breakthroughs going on. But of course. You know, we need the brute force of massive parallel computing. We need, we need the million, two million, three million qubits to to give us that that computational scale up to enable us to unlock unlock the code of life and 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 really have a go at humanity's hard problems, which is uh, which is not insignificant, of course. You know, humanity being humanity, we're doing a good job of messing things up as usual. Typically, it tends to be 75-year-old men in suits or even older. You know, I don't want to get into it too much, but the world is run by old, old people. And I'm getting there, but <laughs> it's, it's, not a, it's not a successful model, given history. Old people running the world. Mm, we need a rethink there, don't we? So... But yes, the computational scale up of quantum, and but let's let's uh, let's cut through to what I'm going to talk about in the next video. The 
there's a number of areas where there's significant breakthroughs. And if you think about what I've talked about before, it's about sensors. It's sensing, collecting data, and then doing something with the data. And typically it involves an AI back end, which is, which is fine, but it's, it's pretty restricted because of AI. AI is in its infancy. Many would argue it's not, but it is. And there's a number of reasons for AI being in its infancy. And in some respects, it's a good thing, of course, because AI is perceived as the existential threat. And uh, <laughs> classically, the people that have been building these AIs, you know, Google DeepMind and OpenAI, some of these founders are now coming forward saying, oh, well, I'm worried about it. Well, you're, you're Mr. Oppenheimer. You've created the, the potential for for doomsday and now you're worried about it but you've you know you've already created the monster would you want sympathy so yeah let's uh let's dig into some specifics because i've been speaking to some very interesting founders and projects that have uh working on some some hardware actually which i quite like and uh, i think the software will catch up and the computation will catch up but anyway we'll talk about it in the next next conversation bye for now